Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed Podcast with Bonnie Serratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Serratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed Podcast. And today we have a special February episode because February is Love Month and Valentine's Day is coming up. And so I'm not sure what title I'm going to name this video yet, Bonnie. I have a few that I'm thinking of when I put when I actually have it ready to put up on YouTube. It, it's either going to be Bonnie's love advice. or <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, you'll figure it out. You always do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, another one I have in mind is since you're like a love magnet, right, Bonnie? So I was thinking calling it love advice from a love magnet. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think? There you go. I mean, on some level, it's true because I, I swear to God, on my life, men and even women have always been attracted to me. Always. See? Yes. Yeah, so this is perfect. I think that's a perfect title. So yeah. let's get okay. it. So what's your secret? That's actually the first uh, question. That is perfect. That goes right into the first question. What's your secret of being a love magnet, body? Tell us. Okay. Well, actually, it's not a conscious thing. It's just something that's always been. And what I am aware of, there is within my own self, there's always a sense of like a of nurturing, of caring, of kindness, gentleness. And there's other things as well, meaning, you know, the, the, the sensual part, the, um, the deeper parts of us where we've got um, sensual, seductive, seductress kind of stuff, okay? But mostly I think is I'm not someone who's pushing my energy on people. I more contain my energy and it's, it's here. So people never feel me like pushing on them or trying to take from them or wanting from them. It's like I'm sovereign in my own being and people are drawn to that. People are attracted to that. You know, they don't want people grabbing on, globbing on, wanting them and with all their negative, with all their, their um, unconscious uh, wounding and take care of me, save me, all of that. I don't hold that. I never have. Even though I'm not saying I didn't feel that within my own self. Here's the thing. If I'm feeling something, I keep it within and acknowledge it. If I don't, then it's going to get pushed out and other people will feel it. So for me personally, I've always maintained my own energy field, my own space. And there's just this place of, of heart openness, you know, where there's that feeling where people are feel comfortable with me. They feel safe with me. It's always been that way. So I don't know what else to say about it, but it's, that's what always happens. And men and women are, have been attracted to me in my entire life. And sometimes they get confused thinking it's, you know, more of a sexual thing when that's not really what it's about. There's just a draw at a soul level. I have um, long, long time friends. I've known like over 40 years and we're drawn together because that soul frequency, the soul connection. And so we have lots of people in our lives we, that we, you know, these are all part of our soul family and there's a soul recognition that also happens. And when someone like myself or anyone is holding more of that soul frequency, the soul energy, then when we do meet people in our soul family, we feel it. We feel that connection. Okay, so that's another draw that, hap that happens in my life and my world is people are drawn to that past life connection that we have. So, you know, for me, it's just really about not judging people, not finding fault with people, you know, not trying to undermine them, not hating them or, you know, thinking they're stupid or, you know, things of that nature. <laughs> so yeah, people are just drawn to the energy. That's what it is. There's a lot of light. I hold light and people are drawn to the light. It's natural to be drawn to the light. And that's what happens. You, you talked about like the sovereignty you um, are within yourself and about like being that light, holding that light. So if people are wanting to step into that, how, what, what advice could you give them? For one thing, you know, it's like you need to clear out a lot of the, the wounding because most people have victim mentality and in victim mentality that you want to be saved, you want to be taken care of, you want someone to protect you. And, you know, there's all this needy energy and wounded energy. And 
I mean, that, that does attract people, okay? You're going to attract your, your wound mate for sure. And if you want to attract something, a higher vibrational frequency, that really does mean either you start practicing coming in, connecting with your own light, that true frequency that we all are, the eternal you, that frequency of pure love and light, the part of you that no one can touch, no one can hurt, no one can destroy. You can't damage. It's not wounded. It's not broken. It's not shattered. It's just pure, pure, pure love and light. When you practice living from that place, taking your awareness into your own light and going into that neutral, neutral, neutral place that we all are and within, behind all the wounding, then we hold that vibrational frequency and people feel it. You know, people will be drawn to that light. Now, if you're feeling like you can't really sustain that, then clear out some more of your unconscious wounding. You know, think about things like when I want think of relationship, what do I really want? Okay, so you want to, some people, they don't want to be lonely or feeling alone. Some people, you know, they want to have that connection because then they believe that when I have somebody to love, then, then I'll be fulfilled. I can remember that in my life. I mean, way back when I was like, my 20s and 30s, I was like Jones and for relationship thinking when I have a relationship, then I'll be happy. People, it's not about that. Relationship is about waking up. It's about all of your unconscious wounding getting activated so that you can heal it and then open the heart. So <clears throat> when we have all our wounding, bringing that to the table, then people feel that they see that and yeah, again, you'll draw your wound mate in, but if you want to, if you want to draw on a higher vibrational frequency, you're going to have to be connecting to that pure love and light. And again, that means facing places where you're still needing somebody else to fulfill you or, um, you know, take care of you or where you feel like you're a victim and, and everyone's always going to be victimizing you. So you'll, you'll draw that in too. But again, if you can hold that frequency and just keep coming back into that, that truth of who you are, that pure love and light. Just keep practicing being there. Pretty soon you're going to actually like it there because it isn't going to be trauma drama. And you'll also feel more centered and more stable and clear. And that's what you want. You want more clarity when you're drawing someone in. I remember before you talking about the different blocks to love for a lot of people. Um, it, of course, you did mention a few, and many of them actually. And one was in not having your heart open, but you also talked about past life things about how maybe you made vows or mm -hmm. oh, that uh, with yeah. people or even with, let's say you were a monk or something, you made some vows. And so are there mm -hmm. these, could you talk about some of the more common ones that you know about, but other people may not? Yeah. So one of the things that's extremely common and think about this, in this lifetime, you fall in love and you have this feeling because you're so in love. I just want to, I lo I'll love you forever. I'll love you for eternity. And then sometimes you actually say to each other, you know, well, I, that I will love you forever. I'll love you for eternity. You know, we, you make, you're, you're, you're literally making vows, promises, oaths. When you've done that, especially in past lives, this is another reason why oftentimes you come into this life and you never seem to find anybody because you got these oaths that you've, and vows that you took with someone else. I have a, a student, this was years ago, 2012, and she was married and then she, they got divorced and, and, but she could never really connect with anybody where she just really felt in love with. So the man that she divorced <clears throat> in a past life, they had taken vows with each other to love each other forever. And the moment I cleared those vows, okay, it was a weekend. We had one, it was, these are students in a program. So once a month, so that, that month we cleared those vows by next month. She was in relationship with another student, okay? And it wouldn't have happened if she hadn't released those vows because she couldn't be available for anyone else. And they ended up getting married. I actually married them and they're still together. And this is, you know, 2012. So we're talking, you know, 12 years later. So that's, um, that's one thing. And then also when we take vows of celibacy or like when we've been a monk or nuns or, you know, any place where we're abstaining from any kind of sexuality, or any kind of intimacy at that level, you know, we've, we've taken those vows and they don't just go away, especially when we make them. So we have to clean those up as well. And those could come around like somehow something in you just doesn't allow for relationship or connection to come in. So anytime someone's th thinking they, they want relationship, 
that that's your conscious mind. You can't really know what's your, your subconscious because you can't access it. But you can tell by what's happening in your world. Okay, so if you're thinking you want relationship and nothing's coming, no one's coming at all, or you get relationship and it's you know horrible or it's intense or traumatizing, again, it's all in your subconscious. So get in there and unravel that. Get a get a healing or get a clearing and unravel whatever's blocking you from having your heart's desire, from having love, from having a, a relationship. Because you don't know what kind of vows, promises, oaths, allegiances that you have made. So again, you know, it's like there's so much interferences that get in the way of us having what we think we want. Okay. But again, too, when you're thinking about love, <clears throat> are you judging? Like, for example, if you're a female and you want to, you know, you want a man to come into your life, do, what are your issues around men? This is another piece, people. You will block relationship. If you have beliefs around men and the same thing with women, if men have a belief around women, they're not going to draw that in. So most everyone has some kind of issues with both the female and the male, masculine, feminine. So clear those energies out, clear those beliefs out. You can even do things like doing some writing with your non-dominant hand. Like if you're a woman and you, you're into men and, or if you're into women, it doesn't matter. Just start writing, writing, writing. Men do this, men, men, men. And then pretty you're going to expose your beliefs. And then you know what you're up against. Because if you have a belief that men are dangerous or they're unsafe or you can't trust them or you've got hatred of them, you're not going to get a relationship of love. Duh. Okay. So we have to clean up all the interferences, what's in the way, and then it comes. Relationship will come. Okay. So, you know, it's like, Everyone's got issues. We all have past lives where we've been traumatized and had horrible things happen to us. If we didn't unravel that, that will still be there. And we won't be able to really open our heart fully to someone. So then we'll be dancing with a partially opened heart. And what are you going to get with that? Problems, difficulty, challenges, arguments, not feeling safe, not feeling loved, all your issues coming to the surface. And then you, you know, you don't really have a loving, beautiful relationship in way in the way that you really want. So again, clean up your wounding around relationship about the opposite sex or the same sex. Clean it up. So Vani, about all these different interferences and things you could see, like the vows and the past life stuff and all the different other things that might be going on in a person that keeps love away. If someone were to like listen to this and they decide to do sessions. How easy or hard, I mean, how complicated could it be to get, have somebody clear up all their issues? Like, I know it's going to be different for everybody, depending on all the different interferences, but like generally, what what would you think that would look like? Yeah. I mean, again, it is individual because some people have severe trauma. Okay. Severe. Others have, you know, your normal trauma and keep in mind, everyone has been uh, shattered in some way, broken, heartbroken betrayed, abandoned, rejected, all kinds of things. Everyone has experiences of that. So again, depending on how severe the trauma is, getting a clearing, basically what happens is you come into the clearing, you say, I, I, you know, I want to have a relationship and I'm being blocked and this is what's happening. And then by tracking, we start unraveling any, any beliefs. And then we also uh, go into the subconscious and start clearing out any wounding that is connected and then also misperceptions around, you know, having a partner and, and whatever beliefs you've got, um, conclusions. And then also we start releasing the traumas and the shock and the crisis and the PTSD and the horrors and atrocities that you've had in relationship because as a soul evolving, you're going to have everything. You're going to know yourself in every way, both sides. So we start cleaning that up. It can, sometimes it's done in one session. For real, one session. So other times it might take two. If it's really severe, and let's just say that there's a lot of dark force stuff, and you've done atrocities and horrors, and you've called, used the powers of darkness, as well as you got a lot of victims. So it again, it just depends on your soul's journey and what you have experienced that will determine how long it's going to take to clear energy up so that you are ready and available to bring in relationship. I heard you talk about this in one of the group clearings from years ago. It was called From Woundmate to Soulmate. And you talk about <laughs> how, 
And I actually took clips from that video, um, Bonnie, and I'm going to put up on YouTube, like the question okay. and answer portions. So people yeah. will, I'll leave links below. So if people are listening to this, they want to watch that, those particular clips, I'll leave links below so you can watch them. But in that, you do talk about how sometimes you might feel attraction to somebody, but it's actually their attraction to you, your feeling. And oh, so how can people, oh. how can people uh, yeah. learn how to tell oh. if they're really attracted to someone or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's so intense. I've had that happen several times. What happens is, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just share a little bit deeply, but um, wound mates are people, people think they met their soulmate, okay, because the intensity is strong. They feel like, oh my God, I met my soulmate. And what's happening is, is it's a wound mate energy frequency. So your wounds are matching up, okay? This is why you see people marrying their mothers and fathers, okay? It's the wound mate. It's also because it's the wound of the whatever you've got. And most woundings are going to come from parent stuff, which is also carry over. So here's the thing. When you hook up with a wound mate, which right now, everybody's a wound mate. Okay. Until your heart is open, which is not many people on the entire planet. So you have different levels of wound mates. Some are less intense, more beautiful. Others are like friggin' intense where it becomes abusive. I've had that. I've seen that witnessed that many times. But what happens is if the wounding is too deep, meaning it's hitting some really deep, gnarly places in your wounding, you won't be able to navigate the relationship and it can become violent, it can become abusive, it can become dangerous and hurtful, okay? And you just can't navigate it. But you feel like you're hooked in and can't let go. Again, you gotta unravel the wounding in order to, to dissolve and release that kind of relationship. And then <clears throat> sometimes people are drawn to you and what happens is they, they're drawn to you, then they hook into your wounding, even though that maybe you felt like didn't feel any attraction for this person at all, but yet all of a sudden now you, you're feeling them, you can't stop thinking about them. That's because they've hooked in. And oftentimes you're gonna end up being in relationship. Those rarely last, unless it's a, um, one where there's a mutual uh, unraveling and a connection. And yes, those, they, those can really last and be beautiful. Again, the wound, the part, someone that she is attracted to you, they hook right in. And then you're like, you know, you're caught, you're just, you're trapped in this experience. And sometimes you just have to play it out, you know, go through it and come out the other side, which you will. And because what will happen is once you're in that connected relationship, the energy of that person hooking in start to dissolve because now you're in a relationship and then you can start to feel what's really true and real for you. So those kinds are really intense. I've had that happen several times in my life. And, and then other times too, meeting people that, whoa, whoa, there is a soul connection. And I, we know it's a soul connection and we know it's past life. And, and it, then we can make choices from clarity rather than being emotionally whipped around, but having that ability to go, oh yeah, we got all these past lives. What is this really about? Is it really about love or is it really about connecting and meeting up with a, you know, soul partner, you know, one of your soul family, and you're just meant to learn certain things and, and move on. So the whole energy attraction thing, we're hooking into each other. And the other piece of it is, is the wounding is like a magnet that draws us together like a magnet. Okay. And then there's also the repelling repulsive. So if you pay attention, you'll notice that with different people, you have a different feel. You know, you might be drawn to this one person, but not to this person. People, it's all about what's in your subconscious. It's all about your wounding, okay? Like, for example, like uh, in childhood, if you've had an abuser, that person, uh, the energy frequency of that person has caused trauma. When you're, when you're um, getting older and you start going into a relationship, two things can happen. Either you're going to be drawn to an abuser or you're going to be repulsed by the abuser, okay? Again, it's all about what is in your subconscious. What are you still needing, wanting, hoping for? Um, you know, when you've got issues of parents that, that abandoned you or they were present but not really present, there's a longing desire to have a mommy or a daddy, you know? So it's all this, it's all the emotions. So again, what's the, what do you experience in your world? It's going to show you what your wounding is all about, okay? And again, get in there, get it cleaned up, Get, get clearings, get supported, because it makes a massively huge difference. We want relationship 
where we're being met, where we're being recognized, where we have unconditional love, we're not being judged, we're being respected and honored and we're cherished and doing the same thing for each other. When you're on the same side, same team, it's a different dance rather than coming in with all the wounding and blaming each other and victiming, victimizing each other, you know, judging each other, finding fault, all of that, it becomes a nightmare and it doesn't have to be, but we're acting out our wounding. And it's all about the soul evolving. It's all about heal the wounding, open the heart, and no love. It's pretty simple, and yet it's a journey. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's a friggin' journey back into the self. Uh, thank you for everything you just mentioned, Bonnie. Um, I know one of the biggest things that anybody learns from you is to heal all your issues, heal all your wounding. And this was a big message today is in order to find love. And even if whether or not you are found an actual soulmate or not, you definitely want to do your healing and uh, clear up all the wounding to even know about that. So do you want to give any final advice to people who are wanting that connection and longing for that? Yeah, I do want to say something around the soulmate issue. I mean, people think that you have one soulmate. <laughs> that just cracks me up. So, you know, that we have a soul family. There's thousands of souls in our family. And we do have main ones that we reincarnate with. And yet we have many soul mates that we'd have done great intimacy with. So, you know, when you're thinking about bringing someone in, <clears throat> I wouldn't even label it as a soul mate. I would label it as, you know, the, the, a person who can really meet you and match you. And that can be kind and loving and gentle and actually see who you are, but also that you can see who they are. So again, don't be making, oh, I'm at my soulmate or I'm looking for my soulmate because you've got so many people that can be your soulmate. And here's the thing, you know, we're looking, looking and the world's full of, you know, billions of people and it only takes one. You only, so even that thought, like some people think I'll never meet him because I'm so different. I'm this, I'm that. I'll never find a soulmate, a partner. That's a belief. Okay. But it's also, you know, you know, when you think about where you are in your consciousness and where you are in your evolution, and for some people feel like they've really evolved, other people don't feel that, but basically it only takes one, okay? One, you're not, you're not looking for a hundred or 10 or 15 or five. It only takes one. So find one beloved, open your heart and have a blast and share the gift of you. Take the risk and be who you are. So something else just came up, Bonnie, from what you just said. So I know that was kind of ending, but I do want to ask one more question from that. Okay, so you're saying like, obviously there's several, there's obviously going to be several options of soul, what you would call, what people would call soulmates, I guess. And you yeah. said, <laughs> <laughs> open your heart, take a risk. And well, what if like some people, I know there are people like this where they find a good match and then they get scared and they run away and then they go after like one that's bad for them. So <laughs> What's going on there? Yes. The, oh my you know, goodness. that happens yes. a lot. Yeah. It hits those places of deserving when we, when all of a sudden here it is and it's right there and it's like, oh my goodness. And all your wounding comes up, all your insecurities come up, all your beliefs, you know, all these subconscious places carried over past lives. I'm not good enough. I'm not something wrong with me. Why would anybody like me? I can't trust anybody would love me. So it's all this subconscious energy is getting hit. And it's getting activated, but people don't know that. So rather than facing it and then keep moving forward in this awesome opportunity, they run away. They shut it down, run away. They can't let themselves have something good, beautiful, positive, where they actually feel happy and loved. You know, the very thing we're asking for, oh no, can't let that happen. There's something wrong with me, you know? So that's, it's all about the subconscious wounding, misperceptions and beliefs. And they get in the way and we won't allow ourselves to have love. And the other piece of that is we can have the perfect person, great person, but we'll go after the, the, the drug addict or the bad boy or bad girl or whatever, because we don't deserve. We're not feeling the attraction to that because it's a deserving thing. And it's familiar, getting in trouble, derelict stuff in trouble is familiar. So we're going to stay with our wounding rather than with the great opportunity that just presenting. So what we do, then we don't. So that's a perfect segue over to introducing the group energy clearings that are available in February. So one coming up February 9th, that one's I am worthy of love. So if you're the, 
if you resonate with that last piece that Bonnie was talking about of uh, um, feeling not deserving, running away from good opportunities, good uh, partners, then you definitely want to do I'm Worthy of Love. And that's mm -hmm. February 9th, 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And there's another one, Becoming Magnetic, um, mm. Activating Your Inner Charm. And that's February 23rd. And if you're going to have somebody activate Becoming Magnetic, you want Bonnie to be the one because <laughs> she's a love magnet. So <laughs> there's like the perfect person to be doing this group clearing on you uh, is Bonnie. So definitely February 23rd, once again, at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we do have a Valentine's Day sale for the whole of February. So link below, 20% off on a package of oh, the ones I just told you about, actually, the, the two upcoming group clearings, as well as two old ones that we picked, that the staff picked. And that's in a package, is 20% off. So click in the link below, and you'll be able to take advantage of that sale just for the month of February. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. This was incredible. And I hope everybody got a lot from it. If you are watching this on YouTube, please like the video, subscribe, and comment below. Let us know what your love goals are for Valentine's. And for those listening on Spotify or Apple, leave us a review. It helps us. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone.